the, the obligation is pretty clear. The obligation is we're using the outdoors to make money. Um, that is the product we're selling. Therefore, we should protect it as both a social responsibility and because it just makes logical sense to keep the places that we're operating in beautiful. Uh, the other piece, though, is it is an opportunity. The reason is, is that the way we get people to come to our company is to convince them that they are better off taking a vacation where they can spend it in the outdoors. So obviously people have a lot of different vacation options to choose from, and they can go on a cruise, they can go to a city, an urban you know, environment, they, they could go to Disney, uh, and then our job is really to get them to be excited about an active you know, adventure to a certain extent in the outdoors. And so to the extent that we um, can do things that remind our guests about the spectacular setting that our resorts are in, and that includes our, all of our hotels and all of our uh, ski resorts, um, and then by nature we're, we're really continuing to push forward the very product that we're trying to sell. So we sat back and said, and, and what I would say is our company, um, you know, before, before I joined the company in 2006, uh, you know, had a lot of environmental efforts going on. I mean, we were very active and aggressive on, on recycling, on water quality issues, on habitat issues. Um, but I'm not sure that it was all coming together in terms of a, a singular mission and a singular focus. So what we did was we sat back and we said, okay, well, how do we integrate our sustainable um, practices or, or new practices? How do you choose? I mean, there, when, one of the, 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 the toughest things uh, is there are so many ways that you could do right by the environment. There are so many ways that you could do right uh, by your employees. There are so many ways that you could do right by your local communities. Um, and as a for-profit public company, the answer can't be that you're just gonna write a check to every single person and every single cause and every single opportunity that walks in the door. So we said, we're gonna use the exact same strategies that we use for our business. We're gonna use that for our sustainable practices. And so we are gonna focus on what is our core. And one of the first things we said was, when you look up the definition of sustainability, everybody, when you say the word sustainability today, everybody thinks about env the environment. But actually, the word sustainability, if you look up the definition, talks about sustaining everything, the environment, the communities, and the economic uh, 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 nature of an activity. Um, and one of the things that we said was, anything we do in the environment, any sustainable practices that we take on, have to be sustaining to our profitability model. Because if they're not, then quite frankly, you know, that is probably not gonna be long-term sustainable. Um, and one of the things we said was, yes, I came to the position at Vail Resorts with a background that, that, that had some passion for the environment, something that I personally care a lot about. But the person who replaces me at Vail Resorts may or may not have that same passion. And if my goal was to put in programs and policies and procedures that would actually last, that would be sustainable into the future, then I had to um, set priorities and, and our team had to embrace those priorities in a way that it was independent of my personal view. So again, it comes back to picking the things that we felt uh, were truly, um, uh, you know, truly had a place in helping us move our business forward. Now, one of the things that I talked about, so that's how we kind of got to the core. This was gonna be the core effort as we push forward into the environment. One of the things that I think is, is, comes up over and over again at, at, at every meeting uh, you have is, is this concept that I think Jim Collins talks about, which I think is one of his best you know, terms, which is this uh, tyranny of the uh, ore and genius of and. And what he's saying is, is that it's so easy to get stuck in the kind of question and answer session that goes like this, well, we could spend money on this environmental you know, pr you know, priority, or we could give our people a raise, or we could give our shareholders a better return. And so we have to choose between one of those three uh, uh, options right now. Um, and I think you see that going on and on and on in so many different places, and it, and it, it happens all the time. Um, the, the message that I think we try and drive home both internally and externally is that is a false choice. That that's the easy way out is to really say, well, everything is a choice between uh, your different constituents. We set out five stakeholders for our company, uh, which is our guests, our employees, uh, our communities, uh, the environment, and our shareholders. And our goal 
is to do ands, not ors. How do we find efforts that everyone can get behind and feel like this is good for me too? Now, does that mean that every single effort you're going to put forward is going to meet the needs of every single stakeholder? No. That's also a false choice, if that's what you're holding out hope for. That's not going to happen. But what you can do is set that as the paradigm, that that's the only way you're going to go through a decision-making process. Um, what that's led to for us is we haven't done everything. You know, we have not pushed forward on every single thing out there. And in fact, one of the things that has been most important to us is that, because we get calls all the time, you know, we stepped out into a little bit of the, the spotlight on the environment, and we get calls constantly to do new projects, to take on new responsibilities. And in fact, one of the things that I found is that, you know, the environmental community is much more apt to call on and hold accountable the people who are actually doing something than the companies that don't do anything at all. So, you know, our company is probably in the, you know, if you looked at all NYSE public companies, our company has got to be in the top 1% or less, uh, you know, literally that high of a percentile in terms of the number of, of environmental sustainability practices, all of these things that we're doing. Uh, and I'm going to touch on some of them in a little bit. Uh, but when it comes time for the environmental community to try and, you know, hold somebody accountable or get somebody to be a spokesman, it, it's always, you know, it always comes back to us. One of the things that we have said consistently internally is we are not an environmental activism company. That's not what we are. So you will not see our company out pounding the street for politics. You know, you know it's not that, and, and, you know, and, and, or climate change or this or that. We, we, that's not something that we do. And the reason is that's not our core business. You know, our core business, even though we may use sustainable practices, our core business is uh, providing people an exceptional experience at the resorts that we have. Our mission is extraordinary resorts, exceptional experiences. There's nothing in there about being green. That's one of the ways that we try and deliver that mission, but it isn't the mission itself. And one of the things that I've seen uh, on a number of occasions is companies kind of confuse that. Uh, they think that they're, the very nature of their company is to go out and be an activist. And I think, you know, if you've got, and there are certain companies that do this very well, typically companies that are owned by an individual, um, you know, and so it's a, it's a manifestation of that person's uh, efforts. But when you're really representing a broad constituency like we are, we've got to be true to our mission, which ultimately is delivering these vacation experiences.